Hey there, folks. Joey DeAngelis here with a, I guess, sort of weekly movie review update. Instead of putting together a separate review for each film, I just figure I watch a couple films and compile them into a video review. So today I'm going to talk about Creed and Tomorrowland. Creed is, of course, a Rocky spinoff film. When I first heard the idea, I was a tad skeptical. I will say that I do have some nostalgia for the older Rocky movies. My uncle is, was and still is a huge Rocky fan, and I remember watching them all the time as a kid whenever I went to his house. So my feelings for this are, you know, somewhat attached. And Rocky, I remember seeing Rocky Balboa in the theater and skipping CCD just to see it. And I'd still say Rocky Balboa is one of my favorites in the franchise, but it's not amazing. You know, I, under, I haven't seen it in a while. Uh, I gotta revisit all those older Rocky movies. But anyway, so we get this new update directed by Ryan Coogler, who is of course involved in, not involved, but, you know, directed Fruitvale Station, which received overwhelmingly positive reviews, and also starred Michael B. Jordan, which this film stars as well. You might remember Michael B. Jordan from Fan Four Stick, but the less said about that, the better. Michael B. Jordan in Creed, I can assure you, proves that he is definitely one of the best male actor, best young male actors we have around. The film's premise goes something like this. You have Michael B. Jordan as Adonis Creed, who is the illegitimate son of Apollo Creed. Apollo Creed is, of course, the first opponent, the first, like, you know, major adversary in the Rocky franchise. He, he's who Rocky faces at the end of the first movie. And eventually Rocky and Apollo became friends, but then in the fourth Rocky movie, Apollo was killed in the ring. Adonis has is kind of obsessed with boxing at this point and wants to train to become a boxer. So he wants to learn from the best. And the best is, of course, Rocky Balboa, of course, played by Sylvester Stallone. So people were skeptical because, you know, as of late, Sylvester Stallone has not has not been in the best performances or best movies, you know, Escape Plan and all that other nonsense. But in this film, I can guarantee you Definitely, Stallone is suitable for the older trainer character, and definitely his best performance in years, and I dare, dare I say it, it's good enough for a possible Oscar nomination. What I really like about this film, too, is the music. The music is rather distinct from the Rocky movies, but also there are, of course, some musical cues from the earlier movies. But what I like about it is I'm not being drilled the Rocky theme every five minutes of the movie. They could have done that, but they didn't. And it just, it felt fresh. It felt new, but it also, I felt an overwhelming, you know, urge of nostalgia. And I definitely have to say, you know, I mean, they're two different types of films in many ways, Force Awakens and Creed. But I have to say, Star Wars Force Awakens really has a lot to live up to in terms of the nostalgia sequel, meaning a film continuing off of a franchise that had been dead for a while. Um, so definitely, Creed is really just great. One of the best films of the year. There's also a notable scene, um, not the last it's not the last fight, of course, but one of the major fights in the movie, Cre it's a one-shot take. They, they do it all in one shot, pretty much. Um, which is amazing. So then we got Tomorrowland, which is uh, <laughs> not Creed. But this movie is directed by Brad Bird, who also filmed, of course, Iron Giant, The Incredibles, and Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. This film is basically... How do I put... Okay, it's based... It, of course, if you can judge by the title, it's based on the, Dis, the section in the Disney parks usually referred to as Tomorrowland. You can find them in Disneyland, Disney World, just about every Disney park has it. Probably all of them do. Or they might be named differently, like I think Disneyland Paris, it's Discoveryland. And then it might be named something different for Shanghai Disneyland, but that's not opening till next year, so I forgot about that. So Tomorrowland centers, you know, you got the main you got George Clooney, who was a young inventor during the time of the 1964-65 World's Fair, and he was also in Tomorrowland for a long time, but now he's kind of a recluse hermit type. Then we got Britt Robertson, a young actress. Uh, she's 
a girl who's obsessed, you know, with like stars and space and science and problem solving, as demonstrated by many scenes in the film where she's in class and she just just want, wants to ask, you know, professors, how do you solve this problem like climate change or global warming? Which that aspect of the movie I definitely like, where you know kids are not just you know being taught just facts, you know, kids. This girl wants to, you know, she just wants to figure out how the hell to fix these things. You know, which is I think is great, and Britt Robertson does a mostly good job. Uh, there are certain moments in the movie where she screams one too many times, and it was in like a like a section of the movie, and it got really really annoying. Um, but other po other things about the movie, well, she finds a Tomorrowland pin, apparently given out at the World's Fair, which kind of lets her transport to Tomorrowland. Uh, there's a big conspiracy going on in the movie that I don't want to spoil, but I have to say the first half hour of the movie was the best part of the whole movie where young George Clooney is at the 1964-65 World's Fair. And I'll spoil this little thing. He goes on to It's a Small World, and then it basically, you know, it, it like the, the ride takes a dip like you would in Pirates of the Caribbean, and he goes into the world of Tomorrowland, which is awesome because the movie goes from being Tomorrowland to Small World, to Pirates of the Caribbean, to uh, Tomorrowland, which I think is kind of neat. But otherwise, I'd say it's not one of Brad Bird's best movies. Definitely, I would say probably his weakest, most likely. I think the visuals are really cool here and there. I just didn't really get attached to the story or many of the characters or the dilemma that's revealed at the end of the movie. One of the cute Easter eggs, I will say, is that the there are quote-unquote robots in the movies, in the movie, and they are referred to as AAs, audio animatronics. Audio animatronics is, of course, the term used for the robots that you see on Disney rides. So when you go on, like, It's a Small World or um, a lot of the different rides in Disney World, those are audio animatronics. So I thought that was kind of amusing. But yeah, Creed, definitely check it out. Well, it's in theaters, definitely supported the box office. As for the film Tomorrowland, maybe just rent it if you're into Brad Bird or Disney stuff. But otherwise, it's not one of the better Disney, you know, park-based movies. Which, again, the only good one we really have is the first Pirates of the Caribbean. So that's about all I have for my weekly movie update. Thank you so much for, you know, listening on my YouTube channel. Um, Silent Film Saturday will hopefully get run up, running back up uh, sometime this month. Probably after finals. I've been really busy with a lot of personal stuff. So... That's about it. Thank you so much, and I'll see you later.